Hey, hello again, and welcome, and thanks for joining me for another video build. This is the Bandai Star Destroyer. Uh, if you remember, I actually won this in the Bluefin Bandai Galactic Contest four years ago, April of 2019, and here we are, April of 2023, four years later. But anyway, I'm finally getting around to building this guy. So let's get back into this kit here. I did also get a photo etch set from Green Strawberry that I wanted to use for the engine bills. Um, the photo etch set, which is really all I wanted, also came with some 3D printed engine bills and shield generators, but I don't know if I'll be using those yet or not. Uh, the kit came with both clear parts and normal parts. Uh, the transparent parts you're supposed to paint and then you can scrape away the paint for light to shine through. Um, I'm not going to do that. It has holes in it also, but this kit has holes. So I will not be using the clear. I don't really see the point in using the clear. If I'm going to be using the pre-drilled holes, the clear just doesn't make any sense to me. You can see the holes there. Um, so I'm not going to be using this. I will be using the normal kit and I will not be using fiber optics. I will use the pre-existing holes. So we've got the base of the model here. We've got the two hangers here and that's what I'm going to start out with and then we have the sides of the Star Destroyer. So I'm going to paint the whole thing before I light it. Because I'll be using pre-existing holes, my diffusion on the sides and all would get paint on it if I painted afterwards, so I'll do that first. Uh, but to start with, I'm going to start assembling some of the pieces. There's just some little extra pieces that go in here and get those put in place. And then I'm starting out by giving it my usual Tamiya Gray Primer. Uh, I'm going to paint the inside of it with my Army Painter Black for light blocking. And then I'm going to give it a coat of Tamiya Fine White to bounce the light around inside the model. Then I'm using my Tamiya Insignia White as the base color for the Star Destroyer. So next I'll move on to assembling and painting the hangers. We got this front one, just three little pieces, very small little detail here. But again, for the scale of it, you can see how big this is. Very nicely detailed, sharp, crisp, clean lines. Looks really good. Bandai, of course, again, does an amazing job with their kit. Then we have the main hangar assembly here where the Tantive 4 is pulled in in the opening shot of the original movie. And I'm just going to assemble these pieces together here. So I'm actually going to paint these pieces first before putting them in. So I painted them with Insignia White and the Primer Gray first. Then I'm going to do a little bit of washing with my German Gray Wash. I'm going to do wash over all these recesses and all this piping and everything that's all around here. Make it pop and stand out a little bit more. And with all of this washed, now I'm going to start assembling and putting it all together. So we got the little front piece here. We have a large hole that goes with this one, small hole that goes with this one. So they key it so it's easy not to get them turned around and going the wrong way. Another thing I really like about Bandai. And there it is placed in its position. Then I'll move on to all these other pieces here for the main hanger and start putting them in. And it just requires all these pieces and they all go together like so and now we've got this section built and you can see that there how that's looking already very nicely highly detailed and just a little light test just to kind of see how the lights gonna come through in there so the kit also comes with this little these little tape pieces for light blocking I'm gonna go ahead and use this one for this main hanger here um, normally I would just paint it black, but since it came with it, I'll go ahead and use it and it just covers up the hanger like so. So I'm going to move on to the side panels here. Um, I'm going to paint the inside of these for light blocking first before I put them into the ship. So once again, I've gone and I've painted these with the Army Painter Black. And then I've moved on and I've painted these with the Tamiya White Primer to bounce the light around more. And then I've also painted the exterior with Army Painter Black, uh, pre-shading 
and then painted them with my insignia white and already it just really pops and stands out so I may not even need to wash the sides. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the sides and I'm going to go ahead and put them all into position now and secure them in place. Uh, this front end here needs a little bit of glue, it's a little loose, and I'll glue that up and get that secured. And here's a little light test. I'm going to use a Cobb LED strip so it's evenly lit throughout the whole thing. Obviously you can see a bunch of light leaks there. Um, especially though on the bottom where the pieces are actually assembled. So along this area here is where it looks like light is leaking through. So I'm going to go ahead and use some of my uh, Tamiya plastic putty and I'm just going to fill this in with some putty for light blocking. And I've done that throughout the entire area of the interior here where the sides meet the body of the ship. And then another light test with the cob strip. Um, pretty much all the light leak is gone. The lighting looks great, nice and uniform, and I haven't even added diffusion yet. A little leaking there, so I might use some black paint. And I did go ahead and I did some black paint along the edge here where the pieces meet over the putty that I had put in there. And then I went and did another layer of white paint on top of that again just to help with the uh, bouncing of the light around inside the model itself. And here it looks much better. Don't really see any leaking on the bottom portion. Uh, that little bit of top there is because it's not secured in place yet, but it's looking really good happy with how this is turning out so far. Alright so now we've got the upper assembly area here. We have these four pieces that go together. Um, this here just has these two pieces that pop in on either side like so. And then we have this back piece that pops in. And then we have these two large sides that this piece goes into. And then we have these two little back pieces here that just pop right into place. And then we have this little piece that goes in the back here and then this whole back assembly will then attach to the other assembly that we have already made. And then last but not least we have this top portion here which gets attached and that has these four areas inside here where it attaches and pulls it down and holds it in place. So that's the first assembly of the top part done. And it's looking, it looks really nice. The detail is amazing. This is obviously an iconic portion of the Star Destroyer. Then we have the uh, bridge area with the um, deflector shields. And those slide right on top here very easy assembly it's just the two pieces and then this is the neck that supports it um, this is the back area where it has the uh, this is the garbage chute where the uh, Millennium Falcon floats away with the rest of the garbage and that just fits right in there then these go on either side and then this piece will go here I will not be assembling it fully yet, but this is a dry fit. This goes right here, which is the back portion of the uh, whole bridge area. And then it will all just push together like so and make the iconic neck and bridge area. This piece only has a few lights. It's got like two or three on either side, plus the uh, trash chute. This one I will just light with the blue single LED. You can see three holes here that light up. Uh, the other side has like five. Then of course we have the trash chute with the couple holes there. So the one LED is quite adequate for that, especially when I add diffusion. The uh, bridge portion here, that will be lit with a cob LED once again. You can see when I put the cob in there, it lights up really nice and even. When I put diffusion in, it'll uh, balance it out a lot better and it won't be so hot. And it's going to look really nice. The underside of this main part here, 
um, I have gone through with putty and sealed up all the areas where the pieces went together, cover up any light leak areas there could possibly be. At this point I'm not sure yet what there will be, but I've sealed up all the areas where the pieces go together. And I've also put a bead down in here where these two pieces fit together to hopefully block any light leaks. Then I painted the underside of all these once again like with the rest of the stuff I painted them with my black. Then I've given them all a shot of white to balance all the light around and reflect it so it'll be evenly dispersed within the uh, area. So here we have the deflector shields. We have the kit deflector shield here and we have this 3D printed one that came with the photo etch. Once again the kit piece is so much cleaner and sharper than the 3D printed one. Um, the 3D printed one does have this photo etch. It has these like beams that go up the side to support it and it has these little teeny spikes that go across the top. It also has this portion on the bottom the arms fold up to support it. But I think I'm going to go with the kit pieces. Here we have the communication tower which goes on to the top here. And then the two deflector shields, I'll go ahead and put those in place on top of this here. So with these portions done, I've painted everything with the gray primer and AS20 Insignia White. At this point, I'm going to do some of the panel coloring like you see on the actual filming miniature. Um, I'm going to go through with some Tamiya Sky Gray and I'm just going to start doing the little panel marks throughout the bottom of the ship here. And here the entire bottom has been done. And then I've dusted it with a little bit of my base coat of AS20 Insignia White just to lighten that up and it looks much better now. And then I've also gone through and I've done the same thing to the top portions using the Tamiya Sky Gray and also this neck piece. There's a little bit of markings there on this neck piece that goes on the back. And then also I've given them a little dust coating of the uh, Insignia White and toned it down and it's looking really good. Happy with how this is turning out so far. So now I'm going to be moving on to this top bridge area and one of the first things I want to do before I light it is I need to paint some of the lights inside here and put diffusion inside. So I'm going to use some of my micro crystal clear and just a few random holes I'm going to fill in with some micro crystal clear first. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some Tamiya Clear Red and just dab it over the spots that I did the crystal clear. And then this way when the light shines through there will be some random red windows here and there throughout the uh, top portion of the ship. And then I've gone and I've cut a piece of diffusion here to match the inside of this and I'm just going to drop this diffusion inside here so that when the light shines it'll be nice and even and no hot spots. So I've taken a little one inch strip of my cob LED and I'm going to glue it into position in the corners here to hold it in place. And then I've got my wires that'll be running out the neck here and they'll be coming out the bottom through the neck into the body of the ship. And here's a quick little test and nice and even and you can see some of those random red lights. So I'm going to continue on with the neck. So we've got this side here with some windows. We have this side that has a few windows. Um, there's a couple windows down here. And the first thing I'm going to do again is I'm going to cut some diffusion and cover up all these holes with diffusion. And then I've gone and I've done that and I've secured the diffusion in place covering up these holes again so that when the light shines it'll disperse it evenly and there won't be any hot spots as you move around the model it won't look like light is shining through in various spots it'll all be nice and uniform and along with the uh, garbage back here i've also added just a touch of some foil to help bounce the light around a little bit inside here so i've gone and i've attached all of this together and I'm gonna give it some power and you can see two lights came on there above the garbage chute. Here's some lights on the side. This is all lit with a single two millimeter LED 
Got the two lights there with the garbage chute lit up. And then we have these lights on the other side that are lighting up. So now it's time to go ahead and start assembling this whole upper portion. So I've got this back plate here that slips over the neck. And then the neck attaches to the upper bridge so I just need to take the wires from my Cobb LED and run it in through and down the neck. And then just push these two pieces together carefully making sure that no wires are stuck in there and they're going to get pinched and severed and just push it until it locks in place. So here we've got the wires for the Cobb LED and then I have my two millimeter cool white LED that I need to secure inside there for the neck. And then all of that's gonna run into the base, but I'm gonna have to cut out an area here for those wires to go through. So I've glued my LED in place, the two millimeter LED. Here's my wires for my cob. I've cut out a little section here for the wires to go through so they don't get pinched. And I'm gonna go ahead and run the wires from the upper portion into this portion of the ship here and then just slip the whole neck and bridge portion in place. Everything looks like it's nice and secure. All good. Moving on to the engine assembly now. Um, looking at the engine bells here on the left, we've got the kit engine bell. Here on the right is the 3D printed engine bell. They're the same size, um, but here's the 3D one. Um, you can see the layers of where it 3D prints. Um, it's not a bad print. Um, it looks pretty good, but it's just not totally smooth. But you take a look at this kit piece. It is so clean and sharp and crisp and just much more highly detailed than that 3D printed. So I think I'm going to use the kit bell. And again, you know, the kit one, it has this ribbed area around the outside, which is nice and clean and finely detailed. Uh, the 3D printed one, he has a photo etch strip that you have to try to glue around the outer edge, which I personally don't think is going to look any better than what the kit piece has. And then again, these are the pieces that I want, and I'll just attach them to the kit bells because I think it's going to look better than using the 3D printed bells. Just my opinion, but that's what I think. So I've got all the pieces here um, for the whole engine assembly. Um, these pieces here have these little sections that attach to them. Then we have the little teeny engines, four of those, and then the bigger engine bells, three of those. And then the uh, other portion here with these pieces. These pieces have these little pipings that go on them. So first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and put these pipings onto these two pieces. And then I'm going to go ahead and assemble them into this section of the engine assembly, like so. I have the upper and lower assembled with their pipings, you can see here. And then we have these two little pieces that go on the very sides of the main area here, with some nice little detail you can see there. And now I've got all three of these. Then I'm just going to put the bottom and top pieces together with the rest of it. And then of course we have the engine bells which will go here like so for the little guys. The kit came with this clear piece that's supposed to fit through the holes and you light it with an LED and it spreads through this clear plastic and lights up all the engines. I'm lighting each engine individually with these 1.8 millimeter cool white flickering LEDs. Um, these holes here for the little engine bells, the LED doesn't quite fit in there. So what I've done is I've gone and I've drilled one of these out to make sure that the uh, LED fits in there nice and snug and I'm going to go ahead and push it through and it slides right in there and is held in place really nice. 
And if I just take this little teeny engine bell here and put it over that LED and give it a quick shot of power, there you can see the engine flickering. For these four, I've drilled out all the holes. Uh, the holes for the big bells are just fine. Um, the LEDs will fit all the way through, as you can see. So these I'm just going to have to glue into position, and they'll light up the main engine bells, and you can see how those look there. So this is how it's going to look, but I need to paint it all before I can put the engine bells in place. Um, and then this is the photo etch piece here like I was talking about that I want to go on the outside of the engine bells here. So this whole area has been primed and painted with my AS20 Insignia White. Uh, now what I'm going to do before putting the bells in place is I'm going to go ahead and go through this entire assembly and start doing weathering with my uh, gray wash, German gray wash, and bring out all the details. And you can see the top portion is done there but not the bottom portion. You can see what a difference that makes. And now I've gone through and I've washed the entire engine assembly area and you can see all of that done up here. And I've put the LEDs in place and then put the bells on and here's how it's looking with the flickering LEDs. I really like the way this is looking. Um, the lights look a little intense to me. They're very, they're bright, which I can tone down. But what I'm going to also do is on each one of these LEDs, I'm going to take some sandpaper here, 800 grit sandpaper, and just sand them down, diffuse them a little bit, and I think it just looks a little softer and a little bit nicer now. So I'm going to go ahead and put all of these LEDs in place and secure them permanently. And I've got them in place here after diffusing the end of them with sandpaper and I've glued them in place with my micro crystal clear. So that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, we got the upper and lower main body parts um, ready to go. We got the whole engine assembly built and painted, LEDs installed. Um, I even went and got all the LEDs installed in the neck and the bridge section of the Star Destroyer. So I'd like to thank you for joining me and uh, we'll have part two in the final part next episode. Hey, if you like watching my videos, please feel free to give them a like. And so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, click subscribe.